Um, I, I feel that, you know, it's a tough time right now in America. The economy is collapsing. People are uh, fearful of, of foreigners. Uh, there's a lot of stress. And I know from my own experience of working 25 years with refugees that we don't need to be afraid so much. Um, there are other sources of happiness. And I have experienced the blessings that come from being involved in the lives of strangers. So I just thought maybe I should share some of that and invite others to take a tiny risk and move a little bit beyond our comfort zone and, and get involved with people they don't know yet. Sometimes I think our possessions, first world style of life separates us from one another. And even though we have a lot of stuff, we're not really happy. We don't uh, have the relationships that are satisfying. And in working with refugees every day, I've come to meet people who have nothing, and yet they get up out of bed every morning, they, they're motivated to make a better life for their children, they, they're grateful for what little they have. Let me tell you a story. Um, for years I worked in San Jose at Catholic Charities, welcoming arriving refugees. We had one woman, about, about 42 I think, here alone separated entirely from her family because of the war in Liberia. And when a refugee arrives, we always meet them at the airport, give them some basics to start their life over and put them in a, a refugee transition house for a few months until they learn enough English to get a job. And we supply them with a little bit of food, a, a food box, essentially something from a, a food pantry. So this woman had arrived at 11 p.m. the night before, and I went the next morning to greet her in the transition house and she was sitting on the floor and next to her was this little cardboard carton of the non-perishable food stuffs that we'd given her and she didn't hear me come in so I watched her for a minute before she noticed me and she was picking up each item out of that box you know a loaf of bread and she would turn it around and look at it and smile put it back in the box like it was a newborn you know and then she was picking up a uh, can, I think it was canned beans. And then she noticed me in the door and she had, the smile just lit up her face and she said to me, plenty food, plenty food. She put that can of canned vegetables back in the box. And I thought, when is the last time I have been that grateful for a little bit of food? Yeah. So the things I learn by my interactions have really changed me. What are the things that you learned by doing this work? Oh my goodness. You know, I started out, I was super nun. I was going to go, you know, leap tall buildings in a single bound and cross the ocean and rescue the refugees from their miseries. And um, once I got to the heat of the refugee camp and the dreariness of the confinement there, I that image wilted pretty fast. I was afraid of the spiders and I was kind of defeated by the, uh, you know, the oppression of the tropical sun. And it did, it was a tough existence for me and I was a visitor, but even more so for the refugees. Um, but I learned that, you know, I didn't have to be in control. I didn't have to rescue anybody. I just needed to care enough to be with them. And that meant so much to them. So I really learned that something that probably all of us are going to learn now with the economic collapse, that what really matters in life is not the things we collect or the things we're in control of or the accomplishments we think we make, but our family, our friends, the relationships that we can build. In your book, you tell quite a few stories about just yeah. the cultural differences oh, yeah. between <laughs> uh, the refugees and the way mm. Americans live. Could you tell us something about that? Oh, it's so true. I remember my first month in the refugee camp in northern Thailand on the Mekong River, this little outpost across the river from Laos. And I was living with a couple of Thai sisters. And one of them said to me one night, uh, we were sitting around the uh, dinner, which was a common plate, and you would dip into the rice with your fingers and dip it in sauce, and everybody dipping into the same plate. And she said to me, Marilyn, 
I have heard that in America it is one person, one room, one person, one plate. Is that true? Hmm, I'm feeling pretty good about myself, high standard of living in California. So I said, yeah, yeah, pretty much, it's true. And her face just went flat and she said, well, why would anyone want to live like that? <laughs> I thought, wow, <laughs> it's true. I mean, we have a lot of stuff here, but we're very isolated from one another. We, we are very insular, not only as a nation, but as individuals. And I think we've lost that, that sense of community. For me, it's not about solving world poverty and ending wars forever. I, those are noble goals. What I care about is inviting everybody I meet to take a small risk, open themselves a tiny crack, and get involved in welcoming someone you don't yet know might be somebody on your own block. It might be somebody at a refugee resettlement office in your town. Um, you will be amazed at how enriched you feel by reaching out to others. Mm -hmm.